Jaya Rado Malaba Kunda Vihari Jaya Rado Malaba Kunda Vihari Gopi Janna Bala Ba Giri Vana Dari Gopi Janna Bala Ba Giri Vana Dari Jasura Nandana Vrijana Ranjana Jasura Nandana Vrijana Ranjana Jamuni Tiravana Jamuna Tira Bona Tari Jaya Radu Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Balaba Giri Vana Dari Jasura Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Bona Tari Jamuna Tira Bona Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Boom Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Oh, thank you.
Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Priva Jikacharya Siddha Shishim It is Divine Grace of Aichad and Bhakti Vedanta Sai Maharaja Shri Prabhupada Ki Iskan BBT Founder at Charja Guru Shri Prabhupada Ki Anant Kuru Vaishya Brinda Ki Nama Charja Shri Haridas Thakur Ki Prem Shri Guru Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Dwayta Gadara Shri Vasari Guru Bhakti Brinda Ki Sesi Radha Krishna Guru Pina Shama Kundu Radha Kundu Gita Govardhan Ki Vrindavan Dham Ki, Mathura Dham Ki, Dwarka Dham Ki, Navadip Dham Ki, Jagannapuri Dham Ki, Chamuna Maya Ki, Ganga Maya Ki, Tosi Maharani Ki, Bhakti Devi Ki, Sambhita Bhakti Vindi Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Sisi Radha Gita Dedi Ki, Shri Krishna Sankirtana Jagga Ki, Gopri Manandi, All Glories to the Sum of Devotees, Oh, glory to the sum of devotees. Oh, glory to the sum of devotees. Oh, glory to the divine lotus seat, the Shri, Shri, Guru, and Gauranga. We could give this a touch more volume. Just a little bit. Thanks, Guru. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Krishna Svadamo Bhagavate Damaganari Bisaha Kalana Sadashum Misha Parana Konadu Dita Narayana Namaskrichana Ramjayavam Narotama Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Utirayat The Bhagavatam is burned as a son it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode, accompanied with knowledge, religion, etc. Persons who have lost their vision to the dense darkness of the age of Kali should get light out of this Purana. Before beginning our study of the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should first offer our respects to the personality of God in Narayan, to the Narayan Narayan Rishis, the supermost human being, the goddess of living Mother Saraswati, the author Shri Asadev, and my spiritual master Srila Prabhupada. Okay, we are on, by my calculation, which, given my state today, could be wrong. Um, fourth Canto, Chapter 26, Text 5. Yeah? Yep. Oh, we have a harmony in the universe. Asurim vritim ashritya goratma Nidanugraha Nyahanan Nishitar Banar Faneshu Vana Gocharan Asurim Britimashritya Kuratma Nidanugraha Nyana Nishitar Bana Vaneshu Vana Gocharan Asurim Britimashritya Gratma Nira Hare Krishna Nira Nugraha Nyana Nishitar Bana Vanishu vana gocharam Asherim vitima shritya Goratma niranugraha Nyahanan nishitar bana Vanishu vana gocharam Asherim vitima Nyahana Nishitar Banaya Vaneshu Banago Chadan Ashrimaitim Ashita Goratma Niranugraha Nyahana Nishitar Banaya Vaneshu Banago Chadan 
Ashwin Vritim Ashvitya Goratma near Nugranaha Vaneshu Banago Charan Asurim Vritim Ashvitya Goratma near Nugraha Nehana Nishitar Bana Vaneshu Banago Charan Asurim Demonic Vritim Occupation Ashritya Taking shelter of Gora Horrible Atma Consciousness Heart Niranugraha Without mercy Nyahanat Killed Nishitai By sharp Banai Arrows Baneshu In the forests Banagocharan, the forest animals. At that time, King Paranjana was very much influenced by demonic propensities. Because of this, his heart became very hard and merciless, and with sharp arrows, he killed many innocent animals in the forest, taking no consideration. Also, you say, at that time, King Paranjana was very much influenced by demonic propensities propensities. Because of this, his heart became very hard and merciless. And with sharp arrows, he killed many innocent animals in the forest, taking no consideration. Purport. When a man becomes too proud of his material position, he tries to enjoy his senses in an unrestricted way, being influenced by the modes of passion and ignorance. He is thus described as asuric or demonic, not suric, not pious. When people are demonic in spirit, they are not merciful towards the poor animals. Consequently, they maintain various slaughterhouses, animal slaughterhouses. This is technically called suna or himsa, which means the killing of living beings. In Kali Yuga, due to the increase of the mode of passion and ignorance, most, almo almost all men are asuric or demonic. Therefore, they're very much fond of eating flesh, and for this end, they maintain various kinds of animal slaughterhouses. In the age of Kali, the propensity for mercy is almost nil. Consequently, there's always fighting and wars between men and nations. Men do not understand that because they, have, they unrestrictedly kill so many animals, they also must be slaughtered like animals in big wars. This is very much evident in the Western countries. In the West, slaughterhouses are maintained without restriction, and therefore every fifth or tenth year there is a big war in which countless people are slaughtered even more cruelly than the animals. Sometimes during war, soldiers keep their enemies in concentration camps and kill them with ver in very cruel ways. These are reactions brought about by unrestricted animal killing in the slaughterhouses and by hunters in the forest. Proud, demonic persons do not know the laws of nature or the laws of God. Consequently, they unrestrictedly kill poor animals, not caring for them at all. In the Krishna conscious movement, animal killing is completely prohibited. One is not accepted as a bona fide student in this movement unless he uh, promises to follow the four regular principles, no animal killing, no intoxication, no illicit sex, and no gambling. This Krishna consciousness movement is the only means by which the sinful activities of men in the age of Kali can be counteracted. Omagana Tamarandasya Gyana Gana Salakaya Chakshusha Militan Gina Tazareshi Gurve Namaha. In the leading up to this point in the analogy, Nardamuni speaking to the king. Um, what's what's going to happen now is we're going to find that the queen, because she was neg neglected, becomes very uh, uh, despondent. Now, does anyone know in this analogy who the queen is? Yes, Ram. The intelligence. So, it probably, what does it say in the verse? Uh, taking no consideration. Um, they don't think. 
They don't. They just like bowling balls or, or in a pinball machine. They just carom. Is that a word? They just careen in carom and bounce off things, and and uh, there it is. But here it's being described. We have to recognize the atmosphere that we're in. This is intelligent. Um, is it a sign of weakness if it's raining and you put on a raincoat? If 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 it if it, if it's if it's you put up an umbrella, is that a sign? Why don't you stand up? Why don't you be a man and stand up to the you know? You're capitulating to the rain, huh? Well, okay, there may be, every material example has an exception, but in general, if, if it's cold and you put on a coat, is that a sign of weakness? What do you think? Is that a sign of weakness? It's a sign of intelligence. So we need to be aware of the atmosphere that we're in. We are being bombarded at every minute by the influencers. Don't they have that in, in, in they have they pay people? They're call they called influencers? They're on, on on the social media. And if there's a product, suppose I don't want to get too mundane. Um, but suppose I'm some pop figure. They actually pay me. They'll pay me to say, oh I lose I use no rot toothpaste. I just love no rot. Look what it's done for me. Bling! The big smile. And they put it out on their, on, their, on their Facebook page and their social media. They're called influencers. And people think, oh, well, they're doing it and they're important. And, you know, and they just move along like sheep. They move along with the current. And it's a, it's, it's a, it's a big deal. How, much, how little freedom. And, and, I mean, I don't want to get too far afield. But it's, it's more and more the... What are they called? Alg algorithms? Yeah, the algorithms. The, the, the people are living in a world of one. They figure out what you like, what you need, what you're interested in, and they're getting better and better at it. They, 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 you know, they know us. Like the average person, somebody told me the other day, how many data points they have on the average person Facebook has, Amazon has. Oh, it's like 3,000 data points or more on the each. And it's more than our spouse knows or our best friend knows about us. And therefore, they send you message. They, they send you product. They send, they send you news articles. And what it's doing is it's gonna, the, the people are going to become more and more stratified, more and more alone, more and more hard fixed in there. It's, look at what's happening in the political system. But it, 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 it's just another influencer of the age of Cully. And people who are intelligent say, wait a minute, what's going on here? The and it depends on what we're looking for. I was talking with a, a devotee, Sarva Boma. You know Sarva Boma from Texas? He's a really nice, he's, a ni he's just down to earth, smart. He's actually quite a smart guy. But he's very, you know, he's just a humble, down-to-earth. Is he from Texas? Yeah, he's, he's got a bit of a droll. You know, he's like, he, he, but he's no slow. I'm telling you, he's, he's a sharp guy. But anyway, we were talking about it. It's a long story, but, um, you know, something difficult happens to a devotee, you know. And, well, I'll g I've mentioned it before. I'll mention it again. There was the 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 Krishna lounge here used, to, and it's a long story. But the pipe broke underneath it, and the whole thing filled up with sewage underneath. It was just a swamp of raw human sewage. Now it had to be fixed because it was just getting worse and worse. And uh, so we got a plumber. It was a Balaram. Your mother helped us find a plumber. It was some friend of hers, you know, and he, we got. You know, devotees, we have no money. We're not going to waste. So we actually got him to go under there for, to give us an estimate. I don't think we paid anything. And he was going to cut. And I'm telling you, and I don't blame the man. He, 
I heard combinations of swear words that I have not heard from a drunk sailor. I mean, that there were combinations and, and you know, and, and riffs on the, it was, it was far out. So he gave the, he, and his price was, you know, probably reasonable for market, but we had, didn't have the money to fix it. So Pava Manaprabhu, who's also quite a talented person, actually, uh, he's a plumber. He knows how to plumb. And he went under there. And he came out with, but it was completely different. It was like chanting Vishnu Sahasranam. It was, oh, go vind the Shama Sundar Girihar, Gopi Nath, you know. <laughs> and I was thinking, s- same situation, but one man, what was his response, and what was a devotee's response? So along those lines, a devotee responds to some difficulty rather than cursing and swearing and, and you know, condemning the conditions and blaming others. Devotees, it's a mantra we say a lot. Oh, Prabhu, it's purifying. You ever heard that mantra? Oh, Prabhu, it's purifying. Well, you know, <laughs> usually when it's happening to someone else and not us, we tell them, oh, Prabhu, it's purifying, you know. But, you know, in our saner moments we think, well, okay, you know, this is some token reaction for something done in the past and it's meant to educate me the word education the latin root to to draw from darkness into light so okay what is krishna sending what can i learn from this how can i advance so a devotee has that goal let me become purified let me advance in spiritual life let me become decorated the qualities of a vaishnava so modamastapa socham the qualities of a brahman let me become purified and it's a concept that's not, they're not thinking that. They're thinking, let me avoid what's difficult. Let me get what's pleasurable. Let me stack up as much stuff as possible. Let me get as much, suck up as much praise as possible. Get to the top of the heap and, uh, you know, sustain it as long as possible. But the, but the I mean, there's, we're not, we're being, talking in general but that the, that the scope of thing is how to develop my character, the quality of my character. I mean, that's just, you know, mercies for wimps, you know. You tell people that we become humbled and they think, well, that's low self-esteem and you're going to be exploited. People are going to walk all over you. So, the, I guess I'll say it this way. Um, the king had a choice. You know, he could have stayed with his queen, with the intelligence, but overwhelmed by the lower modes of nature, off he went. So we have a choice. We have to think, do I just go with the flow? Am I just supposed to, whatever my senses? I remember um, There's a dog who got uh, where my neighbors n- evidently they're now allowing dogs because they're desperate for people for COVID, you know, to, whatever. It's a long story. Um, so there's now about four or five dogs that live over there. And one of the dogs got out. You know, he's a puppy and he wasn't supposed to get out. And I just, I was chanting a little job on my porch, so I just watched. And he was totally, whatever fell in front of his screen. You know, he was, I don't know where, obviously I'm not psychic and neither am I a dog whisperer, but I could, the, the, I could get a sense of the thing that, you know, he smelled something because there's a pizza place. So he, would, he shot off towards the pizza place. But then there was a cat. So he forgot all about the pizza place and went after the cat. But then, you know, there, a truck went by. He went after the truck. So he was just, you know, what is he going to do if he gets it? That's another story. But in this way, they were just, you know, he was just reacting. Whatever fell in front of him, he was just reacting. Now, we're a little more sophisticated than that. But the truth of the matter is that we have a choice. We could, we could stop and say, hey, wait a minute. Walk down the path. They don't walk. How is this going to end? Oh, there's a beautiful girl. Okay, well, you know. <laughs> Mukunda Maharaj sent me. It, it's this great video. It, it's a commercial. If you guys remind me, because it came from Mukunda Maharaj, and it also via Jaidwaita Swami also sent it to me, so it was circulating out there in the sannyasi world. But because Balaram told some folkloric stories, I'll throw one in from yesterday. 
The ad goes like this. This macho man, you know, you, he's riding out there and he's a cowboy, he's out there in the, in the, in the open sage, you know, riding along on his horse. And he hears this, help me, help me, a woman's voice. And he goes over, with, and he looks over the cliff, and there's a beautiful damsel in dis distress. She's holding on to a um, branch, and she's buxom and beautiful and, you know, just, and smiling. Oh, my, my one knight in shining armor. So the guy says, don't worry, I'll save you. And he goes over, you know, to get a rope to lower it down to save this lady who's stuck on this cliff. And, uh, but the advertisement is for clarity water. So he takes a sip of water, clarity water. The advertisement is a moment of clarity. He takes the water and bring, all of a sudden, he's living in a motor home. That she's pregnant, she's put on 50 pounds and pregnant with their fourth kid. He's living with his mother-in-law all in this motor home, you know, and he's changing the diapers. And he goes, whoa, jumps on his horse, sing, and runs away, leaves her hanging there off the cliff, you know, a moment of clarity. So where does it, you know, I'm not, don't send me the emails, I'm anti householder and all that. I was a householder, I raised two kids, you know, it turned out all right by Krishna's grace. So, the point I'm making is that to look down the road, where does this end? Okay, the one who, the one who w dies with the most toys wins. What's wrong with that set sentence? It's a bumper sticker. It's, I've seen it on t-shirts. The one who dies with the most toys wins. What's wrong with that? Okay, toys don't bring happiness. That's true. But what else is baked into that sentence? Okay, okay, that's another good one. But I stack up all these toys, but what, what, what happens? I die. I die. I, 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 <laughs> where do the toys go? The toys go to the dimwit relatives, and who knows where I go. So isn't it that, the, that the Zanarda Muni meets the hunters at Magrari, and he talks with the hunter and says, you know, there's sinful reaction for all these things. And he says, well, the hunter says, well, I'm doing it to maintain my family. And he says, well, go ask your family. Are they going to share the karmic weight with you? Are, they gonna, are, they, are you going to parse it out? And they all say, no way, man. I'm not, I'm not taking the karma for what you've done. So what's the result? Where does it all end up? Where do we go? Who gets the dimwit relatives aren't going to share your karma? So the, we have a choice. That's my point. And we should recognize and I'll use it again somehow. The, the, the old ex analogies are resurfacing. I had a car. It was a Bel Air. I don't know who, the Chevrolet? Who makes Bel Air? It was a, ah, is it? It was a Bel Air. And it, but let me tell you, it was, it was a rent-a-dent. It was, it was a, uh, what do you call it? Rent-a-relic, rent-a-dent. Um, it, 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 had been, it had seen better days. And it had been in a car accident, and the frame, the actual frame was bent, tweaked. So you couldn't get it realigned. It was just like, it was, you know, you'd, um, you've been, whatever. So uh, to drive the thing straight, you had to overcompensate because it swerved. You know, it pulled to the right. It always pulled to the right. So if you wanted to go straight, you had to go like this. You had to like, you know. So <laughs> I remember, I don't know who it was, got in the car. He called me about 10 minutes. He says, what's wrong with this thing? I almost killed myself. I said, oh, you got to lean to the right on the thing, you know. So it takes a while to get used to. So you have to compensate. You have to recognize. So human form of life, we have to recognize we are in the middle of Kali Yuga. And we have all kinds of influencers. And, and, and if we really, the goal of life is to purify yourself, we have to be conscious of it. It says that the king, when he comes back, the wife is very, the, the queen is, is you know, uh, diffident and dismissive of him. And she's, you know, won't give him any attention. And he's trying to woo her back. Because I, I was reading Head in the Chair. It's a couple of verses, so I'm not stealing somebody else's thunder. So uh, everybody will forget by then anyway, so it'll seem fresh. So the, uh, but the queen is, the, you know, won't associate with him, you know. And it says what the first thing he does, because he's expert at flattering, but the first thing he does is he apologizes. He expresses regret, remorse. Oh, I never should have left you. You know, I, I, you know whatever. And Prabhupada puts a great 
gloss on it, you know, explanation. Prabhupada says that the first step, we have, to be, we have to regret, we have to have remorse. Wait a minute, what am I doing? I'm wasting, like Srila Bhakti Thakur says, you know, I've spent my life, you know, uselessly. You know, now I'm at the fag end of life, at the tail end of life, and, you know, what's the use of it? What have I done? What have I got to show for it? I've labored like an animal, you, you know. So many books, like a beast of burden. So the simple thing is that we have a choice. We have to use our intelligence. We have to look down the road. We have to realize it's the age of Kali. And what am I really being influenced? Is this what I really want? Is this what I want? Or is this what it's easy to understand we're not this body. I mean, with a little thought. Uh, you know, we went through that. But we are similarly div divorced from our mind. And our, from, our, from our, our predilections, or what is the right word? We, we all have things that we like. I like this, I don't like that. Oh, but that's me. I'm not this body, but I'm definitely my mind or my intellect or my ego. Oh, you know, you can't treat me like that. <laughs> but just as we understand we're not this body, we're, the gap is even greater that we're not our mind, but, but we so identify with it. So the simple point is that we have a choice and we have to be aware of the, all the influencers. Now the other thing I wanted to say, let's see, because I'm thinking of the time factor. Um, if we want, because it describes here cruelty, this cruel treatment of animals, If one has a particular nature in one area, they will have that nature in another area. There's a story in the Mahabharata. There was a king who wanted to go to heaven in his self-same body. He was so attached to his body, he wanted to take this bag up into the heavenly planets with him. And he went to a rishi and said, can you please do this? You know, and the rishi said, first off, it's foolish. I'm not going to do that. It's ridiculous. It's come, but why? You know, run along. So the, they went to the, the king was so determined, he went to the sons of the sage, it's in the Mahabharata, and said, can you do this? They said, we're not going to do what our father didn't do, and, and it's foolish. But all right, because you want to do it, I think you go to this rishi, he'll do it for you. You just offer him a bunch of gold, he'll do it for you. This, this yogi. They said, well, why will he do it? Why do you think he'll do it? I, you know, the guy was getting a little fatigued. I went to one ashram, I shoved all the way to another ashram, and, you know, how do I know this one's going to work? They said, and and the, the, here's the thing. The sage said, these young, the sons of the sage, also sages themselves, said, here's how you, whoops, here's how you'll know you'll do it. I'm looking for some water. There we go. Here's how we know he'll do it. Once I was in the forest with him, and there was some fruit that had fallen, a mango had fallen on the ground, and it had rotten on the bottom. But the top was unspoiled, and he ate it. So I could understand, here is someone who will not discriminate. I mean, you know, you won't eat it, you know. What kind of person? A, 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 a sattvic person thinks, well, this thing is spoiled. I'm not going to touch it. But, you know, well, there's a little bit of good. You know, cut out the bad, we'll eat the good, you know. So as someone who won't discriminate in one, here's the point. One who will not discriminate in one field will not discriminate will not have discretion in another. You don't have discretion in this field, you won't have discretion in that field. If one is cruel to animals, you're going to be cruel in your dealings with other people. You're, going to be, you're, go, you're cruel. That's a fiber of your consciousness. It's woven into your consciousness. So we have to recognize it's, we had a guy, uh, a professor, who used to come to the temple in Ann Arbor, Michigan. University of Michigan. He was the chair of the psycho uh, psychiatry, psychology department, whatever you call it. And a uh, very nice man, smart guy. And he used to come to the temple. And I, I, Satrupa Swami was visiting. And so I told him, uh, uh, he was at the temple, and I said, you know, this person is coming, this sadhu, saintly sannyasi is coming tomorrow. You really like the class. Why don't you come tomorrow? He said, oh, geez, I've got a counseling session, you know. Because he also, you know, freelances, whatever it was. He was a psychiatrist. So what to do? So he said, can I use your phone? I said, yeah. And I was getting something out of the office, so I, I was, couldn't help but overhear him. And he was trying to break the appointment. And what he finally said, he was determined. What he finally says, he said, no, no, you don't understand. 
He said, I have to go see my psychiatrist. So he was saying that hearing Bhagavad Gita was his psychi psychiatry, his therapy. So I said to him, I said, that was really nice. You know, I said, uh, I said what? And he said, oh, no. He said, he said, the best analysis of human nature I've ever read. This is a PhD, chair of the psychology department, University of Michigan, which is especially in the social sciences, is one of the top universities in America. And he's saying Bhagavad Gita. He said, the sections describing the modes of menial nature and the divisions of faith and, you know, perfection of renunciation, activity in the mode of ignorance, activity in the mode of the same activity and how it's performed in different modes and what the reaction. He said, that's the best analysis I have ever seen, ever read of human nature. And I was thinking about it a little later on, that not only is it descriptive, here's a quiz for you, not only is, are those sections that if you're in this mode of nature, uh, you know, too much sleeping, you'll be influenced by the mode of ignorance. If you eat food that's old, you know, old and nasty, you'll be in the mode of ignorance. If you eat things that are, you know, full of chili and, you know, visit Korea sometime where they all eat garlic and, 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 and what's that, kimchi? What is that stuff called? It's garlic and chili, isn't it? Oh, jeez, man, you could run a car on that stuff. Huh? Uh, well, it may have some salt and probably got some fish guts in there, you know. Give it a little, round it out. But the point is, they eat food in the mode of passion. You know, passion killings. So, but here's the thing. Here's what I, it's these descriptions you find there are both prescriptive and descriptive. You can, you can self-analyze. Okay, I'm feeling despondent. Well, I'm probably in the mode of ignorance. Okay, what are my activities? So it'll, you can self-analyze. I'm feeling like this because I'm in the mode of ignorance. Okay, that's important. That's descriptive. How is it prescriptive? Because is it, and here's the big hint, is it sufficient to know, okay, I'm in the mode of ignorance, kijai? I'll just keep lying here on the couch hoping I win the lottery. Why is it prescriptive? Like taking a medicine, like taking a prescription. Mm -hmm. Yes? The remedy is also there. Both the analysis, but how do I get out of it? Oh, wait a minute. I want to be in the mode of goodness. And also what to speak of pseudosattva, purified goodness. But it's both, okay, here's why I'm feeling like this. And here's the activities I'm doing that are putting, and, and the mental states and activities and consciousness that's putting me in these adverse mental states. Because our mental state is reality. It's not the conditions that determine our happiness and distress. It's our consciousness interacting with those conditions that determines. It's got nothing to do with the conditions. That's just a farce. It's our consciousness. And here I'm in this consciousness, so I'm suffering. Okay, now I know what's up. But it will tell you what to do about it. What are the steps to get out of it? So the simple point is, the, 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 we're in this cruel age. And we, if, if we want to make the, probably sometimes positively quote Gandhi, the famous statement is that amongst politicians, he was a saint. And amongst saints, he was a politician. So, uh, but be the change you want to be. We live in a cruel, harsh world. I mean, where do you want to start? I don't want to take up your time, but, you know, cruelty to animals, cruelty to each other, cruelty to the baby in the womb, cruelty to the environment. We are harsh. Our whole approach to interaction with everything is harsh. So how do we change it? Well, here it's being described, and it rests on this principle of cruelty and exploitation. So, in summation... Uh, well, I guess I'll give you the short version. Um, Prabhupada says at the end of the purport, this Krishna... I bet I get my glasses. Because I want to read you two quotes. The Krishna consciousness movement is, o is the only means by which the sinful activities of men in this Kali Yuga can be counteracted. How do we fight the tide? What do we do? And then Prabhupada says... Uh, it, it, 
by reading Bhagavatam, it's meant to bring about a revolution in the impious lives of misdirected civilization. It's actually a verse. It's in the introduction, and it's actually a verse in the first canto, and it's a verse in the twelfth canto. It's like bookends. It's in the beginning of the book. It's in the introduction and the beginning, and it's the end. That this is what's meant to happen. It's meant to be an into be the change you want to be in the world. It's meant to be a revolution in our own heart, which will create a revolution in the world. And so let me ask you this. Why do we, if we want to become merciful, if we want to give real kindness, if we want to change, if we want to go from a kanista to a madhyama, frankly? You know, there's God, and kanista means there's Krishna in the temple, and I do my puja, and I'm happy, I'm, you know, I'm going back to Godhead and jai. And a madhyama feels deep compassion. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission. So ha ha, why do we go out on Sankatan? It's motivated by mercy. Yeah, deliver the kid. It's motivated by kindness because they, well, I want to say it. There used to be a devotees put together a radio show called Radio Ram. Do you remember Radio Ram? Do you remember Radio Ram? I'm telling you, it was fantastic. They, one of their shows had a bunch of, it was a comedic, uh, co uh, comedic bits they would do. One show, though all the bits were called Everything You Know Is Wrong. <laughs> Which I thought was just, because it's true. Everything, the material, they got it all, they've got it completely backwards. So, in Radio Rum, one of the things they did, they had, um, they had a restaurant. And the favorite dish in the restaurant, it was an advertisement. And the guy was into the radio guy was interviewing him. Well, what's your favorite item? He says, well, I tell you what, I really do a great, I tell you what, I just can't keep enough of. It's called pre, uh, primordial soup. Well, what's in it? He said, to tell you the truth, we don't know. Well, who makes it? <laughs> we don't know. It's just there every day. But I tell you, the students really lap it up. He said, it's right, it, it's, it's the only thing that gives it any competition is our missing link sausage. It just goes on and on like that. And they just lap it up. Everybody just lap. Primordial soup, where did it come from? I'm going through a series of talks by Akandadi Prabhu. They're just fantastic. And, and if you think about it, it's Prabhupada, you know, he called their bluff. That's our job. Our they are being influenced by these completely illusory messages. And w our duty, we've got to go. Prabhupada says in the Bhagavatam, wh the one thing that sadhus cannot tolerate, the very symptom of a, to of a sadhu, is tolerance. Tatikshava karunika. Hey, interesting, they go together. But um, tolerance. But what is the one thing a devotee can't tolerate? Okay, well, I'll help you out because of the time factor. Huh? Yeah, exa exa <laughs> there's a lot of things devotees can't tell, but that's a good one, too. Actually, you're all right. But s suppose we're sitting here, and if there were a baby crying there, or, 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 or someone who had, you know, had, had a broken arm and was sitting right there wailing, I mean, come on. We, you know, Bhagavatam class is over. We've got to help this person, you know? So Prabhupada says the, the, the sadhu cannot... Uh, cannot tolerate the sound, the cry of the conditioned soul being crushed by the material nature. So th Prabhupada's books, the message of Bhagavatam, this is real mercy. Because they, everything they know is wrong. And this is the point I wanted to end on. It is such an incredible bluff. They don't know what this is. This stuff. Matter. They have they have the macro end, which is general theory of relativity, you know, Einstein's. So that explains how big things operate, okay? And they've got a theory. They were completely bewildered by small things, you know, subatomic atoms and subatomic particles. So they have quantum mechanics. So quantum mechanics explains micro, explains all the little nanoparticles. Of course, the farther they get in that, the more it's a complete mystery. I'm not making this up. So they have, they have, for the big things, they have the general theory of relativity. And for small things, they've got quantum mechanics. But they don't align. They're completely opposing theories. Either this is true 
or that's true. And they're looking for you know, the unified field theory that some will, some or other will unite the thing. They will stitch it all together. Whoever gets that gets the Nobel Peace Prize. They're, they're immediately in mathematics. They're immediately better than Einstein. That they've, they've stitched the thing together. But they're completely, a, is it a particle? Is it a way? In other words, they don't know what it is. They don't know. They'll bluff you. They got a whole lot of theories. They don't know what gravity is. They can simulate it. They can define how it works. But what, we know it's Balaram, but what, say snog, but what actually causes gravity, they do not know. They do not know what electricity is. They don't know where 87 or 90 percent of the matter in the universe is, dark matter. It's got to be there. Otherwise, the creation, the universe would implode on itself or spin out into nothing. So some, the mass and gravity is holding it together. They don't know where it is. So they call it dark matter. My point is, consciousness, the one thing that we all know, each of us knows that we're conscious. We all know that. We, uh, hey, I don't know about you. I don't know about the rest of this stuff. It all could be a dream. It all could be a hallucination. But I am conscious. I know that much. I know I'm conscious. But what is consciousness? They're trying to call it brain function. But the, how do they explain emotion? They have no way to explain emotion. They simply can't do it. So they don't know consciousness. They don't know matter. They don't know gravity. They don't know electricity. What the hell do they know? I'm sorry to say. <laughs> Very little. It's a, so we have a duty. The whole world is being driven in the age of Kali by these lower modes of, as it's described here, lack of, no mercy, no kindness. And it's a rough world. So the Vaishnavas go out and give mercy. And the mercy is to shake them up, to wake them up. And that's kindness, and that is mercy, and that is intelligence. So we can end there. Thank you very much. I didn't even start on that. I don't even have a social system. Let's toss that one into. They don't know what is consciousness, what is matter, and they don't have a, con and they don't have a social system. It's a complete disaster. Divorce, you know, what you, we all know it. They don't even know who they are. Gender identity, they're completely scrambled up. The whole thing is scrambled. And yet they're arrogant and proud. All glories to Prabhupada. Yes.